Welcome to part 7 of my guide to building an Xbox powered arcade cabinet. If you remember back to part 1 we took the Xbox apart, now we're going to put those parts into this cabinet. Here we have the hard drive and the plastic chassis. We're going to mount the hard drive in the cabinet with this chassis, but to make it easier to fit I'm going to remove the legs. So I'm using a hacksaw here to take off these uh, extra bits of plastic we don't need. There you go. The base of the plastic chassis is now flat, so we can mount this on the cabinet. I like to give it a sand just to make sure it's nice and smooth. These plastic feet are useful. If you cut them up, you can use them as mounts for the PSU. Don't like to waste anything. Now we can fix the hard drive back in its case. Hopefully you've still got the screws for that. This is our Xbox motherboard. These are brass spacers. Turn the motherboard over. There's some holes here where this was originally screwed and secured down into the Xbox. Okay, so I have a glue gun. I'm going to fix these brass spaces to the motherboard so they act as feet. So a bit of glue on the hole, push the brass spacer in, one of these in each corner. Bit of glue in the hole, push the brass spacer in. Okay, flip the motherboard back over. So you can see the spacer protruding through the hole, there we go and the feet make it sit nicely off the surface we do the same thing with the PSU this time we're going to use these little feet that we made ourselves bit of glue on here and then we'll find a convenient spot to stick them down on the PSU there are a couple of holes there where the original screws went in, that's where you want to put these. Now the reason I'm using these here instead of the brass mounts is we can get a screw through this hole to secure it down. There's no hole there but we only need two screws on this. The feet make this sit nicely off the surface.
Now we're going to mount these parts in the back of the Xbox. We'll start with the PSU. Just be careful carrying this. Hold it by the wires if possible. I push this right up against the edge. Then we have the motherboard. And uh, push this against the PSU. Just leaving a little space at the front for the um, control ports. Now we're going to secure the motherboard down using the screws. There's plenty of holes on the board so I'll just pick a few here. Towards the front we've also got another screw just to secure this down nicely next to the controller port. So on the PSU there's a couple of holes where the screws were originally. We can put screws in there to secure this down to the cab. When we're done there we can plug this in. So we're plugging the PSU back into the motherboard to supply power to it. This is a PCB from the DVD-ROM drive we took apart in part 2. You notice that I've attached feet to this. So I'm not going to be fitting the DVD-ROM drive in here, just the PCB from it, just to save space. So this goes in the bottom of the cab again. You see that I've put the feet on there and that can be screwed in easily and then attached back to the power lines and to the IDE cable. There we go, all plugged in, screwed down. There's our hard drive in its case. We're going to use some slightly longer screws to secure this down. The three holes here I'm using. Okay, so I've positioned the hard drive centrally at the back of the monitor bar. Just make sure that your IDE cables and your power lines reach and then secure it down. It's a fan, standard 5 volt fan. I like to put this at the back of the cabinet. It's about here. Sometimes I'll upgrade that to be a bigger fan. For now this will have to go around the front where the connection point is. So it just connects onto another board here. We'll move the fan in another video. Here's the on off switch. We'll connect that here. This is our junction box. If you take the top off, you'll notice there's some a couple of holes in there for screws. So we can secure that down to the monitor bar. Just here. Just make sure the wires are feeding through the, the sides nicely. Put the cap on. Secure it in place. Cables from the junction box go to the monitor power and also to the Xbox power. I like to feed that through there. Around to the front, plugged in. To test this I'm going to connect up the video. I'm going to start the Xbox up. Green lights are good. Xbox is booting up into Dash. That's all working. In my next video we're going to look at connecting up the control panel. It's been requested quite a lot. Thanks for watching guys.